I'm gonna go over five things you should do when your website, your WordPress website crashes. About a year ago, I had a site that was getting, I don't remember, like 1,500 to 2,000 visitors per day. It was uh, going pretty well, right? That's a good amount of traffic and I was making a few hundred dollars a day from that site, like every single day. So it was awesome, except at some point the site started crashing, right? So it wouldn't load. I was getting these notifications that my site was down and I called up the hosting company to see what was going on. They kind of helped me a little bit. They like checked to see that the site was down, which was a you know good confirmation. They booted the server or something like that. They reset something and then it, it worked again a little bit later that day. It kept happening over and over again and I was stumped. So <laughs> I really didn't know what to do. I asked around a little bit and no one could really help me. The hosting company said, hey, you should just uh, you know, make sure your site loads quickly, make sure um, you know, you're not overloading your server and just like generic stuff. So they, they just sent me a guide to speed up my WordPress site. My site was already loading in like one second, right? It was, it was pretty fast and I didn't know what the issue was but it just kept crashing day after day. Well, eventually I, I changed hosting companies and I now use SiteGround. I won't mention the other company that, that I had issues with, but I moved to SiteGround. I'm an affiliate for them, by the way, I'll put a link below. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about sort of the steps you should take really before your site crashes and then after your site crashes to you know alleviate the issue. My name is Doug Cunnington. I talk about Amazon affiliate marketing, productivity, project management and stuff like that. So if you're new to an interesting project, have a look around. If you like the videos, please consider subscribing. So the number one thing to do is have a backup of your site off of your server. So I'll explain a little bit more in a second. Now, when I first started working online in 2013, I saw that my hosting company had you know free backup service, free daily backups. And I was like, great, I don't have to worry, right? Well, you do have to worry because most of the time those free backups that your hosting company does, they're in the same like folder structure as your hosting account. They're on the same server, physically on the same drive, literally in the same folder, and it's just backing up your WordPress install. So if you make a little mistake, you can restore it and you know no harm done. But if there's some physical problem with the server. Sometimes servers go down, sometimes data centers have issues. It's rare, but it does happen. I've known multiple people that that's happened to. And basically if the physical you know, hard drive fails, your backup's gone, right? If it's in the same folder, if it's on the same server, your backup's gone. So it's super important to have site off server backups. I personally use uh, Manage WP and it's like $2 a month for a single website and they give you a lot of other uh, capabilities. So check it out if you if you want sort of a managed service. I know that there are free plugins that you could install on your WordPress installation. It will, you know, back up your full install including databases and then you could link it up to like Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever. But you know, Manage WP, they handle everything. It's offsite using Dropbox and fantastic service. You know, really a lot of capabilities there. So that's the number one thing. Make sure you have a backup because if your site goes down, then you'll be able to restore it very easily. And by the way, Manage WP makes it super easy to do like a restore. I'm much more, uh, I guess, brave to make changes on my WordPress install because I know I can restore the whole WordPress installation in like a minute, right? I just have to click a button and it's back the way it was from like the last 24 hours. So number one, offsite backups, really important. Going to number two, this is like when your website's down. So let's say that you realize your site's down, maybe um, you check it yourself, or maybe you get a notification or something like that, um, which I'll describe in a second. But let's say you realize and you think your website's down. It's really important to confirm that it's actually down. So I recommend you know checking on another device. So if you are you know, using your laptop and you see that your site's down, check on your phone, use like a, a LTE connection or whatever your data connection is or vice versa, you know, get your friend or spouse or partner to, to check um, somewhere else off site as well. Basically want to double check to make sure it's not a caching issue or DNS or your specific connection for whatever reason. So just double check. Additionally, you can go to like some of the speed checking sites like Pingdom. 
So I, that's the one I use often. And you can you know, put your site in there. If they have trouble reaching it, then you'll know that your site's down. So it's really important confirm your sites down. And a sub note on this one is I use a couple things to check my uptime. So in WordPress, there's a plugin called Jetpack. It's a suite of tools and it's put out by Automatic, which is the parent company of WordPress. So I'm happy to use that one. It's free. There's a tool called Monitor, I believe, and it will send you an email if your site goes down. And if it stays down, they'll remind you, hey, your site's still down, it's not back up. Or if it comes back up, then they'll send you an email and say, hey, your site's back up, it was down for 10 minutes, something like that. So I recommend, you know, use Jetpack or some other similar tool so you know when your site's down and you'll get an email notification. That way, you know, you have some external source. I, you know, don't go to my site every single day or I don't go to my sites every single day to check if they're up. So definitely use some sort of monitoring plugin or application. Number two, you've confirmed that your site is down. So what do you do next? Call the hosting company. That's usually my number one thing to do because they'll be able to, you know, hopefully check the server. They'll be able to take a look at the, you know, the overall, you know, system and understand if there's some sort of outage. Occasionally, right, a company will have a server or a data center issue and there's not redundancy in place and there's a problem, right? It happens occasionally. So it's worthwhile to call the hosting company or hop on their chat support or whatever you need to do to open a ticket. And by the way, this is the reason why I switched hosting companies. SiteGround has just fantastic customer support. If you hop on their chat, usually you're chatting with someone like a real live person within like 10 seconds or so. And it's not just a customer service like representative, it's an actual admin that can go log on to your server, they can you know check to see if it's up, they can look at things and they know how to work on the command line and hop into WordPress and, and figure out what's going on. So it's really important to have a hosting company that has good customer support. Now, one thing that I'll mention is SiteGround is probably more expensive than some other hosting companies and you get what you pay for, all right? So most of the time, 99% of the time, your hosting works fine. Like most of the hosting companies probably are running on like AWS, the Amazon Web Services, and they don't even have the servers probably. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's true, but the fact is it's pretty easy to have uh, like a good hosting uh, service, even if you don't, you know, the hosting company doesn't physically like have access to those servers. But when you have an issue, it's really important that you could call someone up and they can actually help you right then. So the issue with my previous hosting company was I would call about a problem and they would have to open a ticket with the technical support before anyone could even check the server. So what that means is they were just going through a script to tell me to check certain things based on the symptoms of whatever problem I was having. It turned out that wasn't particularly helpful. Uh, actually, it was, it was not helpful at all because I kept having the problem over and over again. So I'm jumping around a little bit, but basically once you confirm that your site's down, Call customer support, see what they can do for you. Sometimes it's an easy like answer. Hey, they're replacing like a hard drive and it's gonna be back up shortly or our data center's on fire and you know everything's lost. We hope you had an offsite backup, but call the hosting company. They'll hopefully give you more information. So the third thing you wanna look at when you're talking to the hosting company, you kinda of wanna figure out the root issue. So the first time that I had trouble with the site that I was telling you about, I called in, they reset the server or did, actually I'm not even sure what they did, but they did something and then the site started working again and it was fine. I didn't press them on you know, what the issue was. I asked, you know, was it something I did? It, was there an issue that I created that you can tell me about? And they, they weren't able to answer that. I think I asked, uh, was there a problem on the server? Maybe another site had lots of traffic and it bogged everyone else down. They weren't able to answer that either. Again, this was a, just a pure customer service person that I was working with. I didn't have access to the admin who actually like reset the server for me or whatever they did. So at that point, I really didn't know what the root cause was, but it's really important to figure out that root cause because what happened to me was my site kept going down, you know, three, four times a week for two weeks each day, right? I was losing 
like $400, $500 a day. Not cool, right? Just in general, not a cool thing to happen. And it was a problem that hit me pretty hard and I was trying to figure out what to do. Again, this goes back to having solid customer support so someone can actually investigate issues. They could look at the error logs on your server and other information to figure out what the problem is, what the root problem is so that you could fix it and then not have the problem in the future. And this is sort of a sub point. I think we're at four or five. I, I, I lost count here. But if you are having trouble figuring out the root cause, you may want to look at your traffic numbers. And this was an epiphany for me. And after I talked to some friends of mine who are WordPress developers, they confirmed my suspicion. So this particular site was one where I, I added a lot of content over time. In fact, I'll put a link in the description, I added like 200 articles over the course of like five months and then added a lot of other articles um, beyond that too. And what happened, these were keyword golden ratio posts, which is a keyword research uh, lingo. Uh, again, I'll put a link in the description, but basically my traffic was growing in a very slow way, but significant. So my traffic was, I'm just gonna make up the numbers, say I was getting you know, a thousand visitors a day for a while. And each week my traffic would go up, for example, like 1% per week, which isn't a huge amount, but of course over six months or so, that's a lot of traffic. And when you fast forward um, beyond, you know, that period, sometimes I was getting, you know, several thousand visitors per day which is a lot, of course. So I was getting a lot of traffic and it happened very slowly. So I didn't realize it when I looked at my traffic graphs over the course of say one to two months, it looked pretty much flat. But when I zoomed out and I looked at 24 months, two years of traffic, I could see, oh wow, this is actually still growing, but it's growing so slow that you know, in a monthly view, you just can't tell. So at that point I was thinking, is my site getting so much traffic that it's like bogging down WordPress? And it turns out, that is what was happening. So I moved to a bigger hosting account, a more expensive one, it costs maybe $100, $125 a month or so. And it was, you know, had more memory, had more processors, all the good stuff. And it was fine after that. But the interesting thing with WordPress, and this is where my WordPress developer friends uh, confirmed my theory, basically you hit some threshold, which it varies because of like the plugins you have on your site, probably the theme, the number of sites and domains that you're hosting on your account and a number of other factors, right? There's some threshold where WordPress reaches a point where it just stops loading. So everything will be fine. I'm just making up numbers here, by the way. But let's say you get 1,450 visitors per day. Everything's fine. Your site's loading quickly. Everything's going great. And then you, you tick up to like 1,500 visitors per day and then your site happens to crash often and it's down for the peak hours of the day. When my site was down, I would I would go to it and it would take like 35 seconds to load. It would try to load, but nothing would happen. Other times it would have a, I think it was like a 500 level server error. So it was like a 503 or 500, some sort of error that didn't give you much information. So the point I'm trying to make is your traffic can be fine one day and then a little bit more the next and it'll make your site crash and it'll be down 100%. It won't take like 10 seconds to load. It'll try to load and then it just never will load. And for some people, it looked like the site was completely down. For other people, it would load. So this period of time, my traffic was you know, really high for you know, a while slowly ticking up each week and then it dropped down to, you know, from 2,000 visitors a day to like 100 visitors a day and all my metrics went down. I was literally making like no sales. I think the 100 visitors a day that actually made it to the site, like maybe they never had the page load fully, right? Maybe it was just the analytics code that loaded. So a couple key things went to recap here. Uh, number one, make sure you have off-site backup because at that point, worst case scenario, you can get a new hosting account, restore your site, and once you update the DNS, within 72 hours, you should have a, a site that's loading just fine, all right? So offsite backups, really important. You could use a, you know, a, a service like Manage WP, or you can handle it on your own with a free plugin. Totally up to you. Two bucks a month um, at the time I'm recording this for Management WP. Um, number two, have some sort of uptime monitor so that you get a notification via email or some other mechanism. You can get a text to your phone, whatever you wanna do to know when your site's down. 
Number three, confirm your site's down when you think it's down. So have other people check, use other connections to see if your site's truly down. Number four, once it's down, call your hosting company and then like figure out if they can help you, right? If you have trouble getting good support from your hosting company, that sucks, I'm sorry. It's something everyone goes through. And then check out SiteGround. Again, I'm an affiliate. I get a commission if you sign up with them, but customer service, solid. Last thing is figure out the root cause. If you have a good hosting company, they should be able to point you in the right direction and do a little investigation for you. And you know, whatever you need, your hosting company should help you out. I mean, if you're paying them a reasonable amount, they should have the customer support, technical know-how to help you out. So those are my five tips and I hope your sites don't go down, but having the contingency plans in place is super helpful to make sure uh, if something does go wrong that you could fix it. And if you have a website, at some point you will have issues. So having that backup, is just a really good idea. All right, thanks for watching. If you have tips for you know either backing up your site or what to do when your site crashes, let me know in the comments below. Really interested to hear about that. If you've had different experiences, also let me know too. So looking forward to reading your comments. And by the way, you know, some of the best discussions, some of the best ideas are from your comments. So don't forget to read those and check them out. Thanks.